there! It is so good to see you today. I'm Miss Heather, and this is Bible Blast. Today we're going to talk about how God takes care of us and how we have no reason to worry. Do you ever worry about anything? I think we all worry sometimes. But we need to remember that God is in control and he's watching over us. So let's learn a little bit more about how God takes care of us. This book right here, which is called He's Got the Whole World in His Hands by Kadir Nelson. And this book has really beautiful pictures. So I thought, I might read this book to you today. So here we go. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got my brothers and my sisters in his hands. Look at that, he's got a picture of his brothers and his sisters. He's got the whole world in his hands. Here's a close up of the drawing that he made of his brothers and his sisters. He's got the sun and the rain in his hands. Look at that. Can you see the raindrops? And he's got his raincoat on and he's got an umbrella down here, but he's not using his umbrella. He's just enjoying the rain on his face. Do you ever play in the rain like that? He's got the moon and the stars in his hands. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful night sky? All the stars and the moon. He's got the wind and the clouds in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Look at that. They're outside enjoying the wind and they're flying a kite. Can you see that kite way up there in the sky? You need a little bit of wind to fly a kite, don't you? That looks like fun. He's got the rivers and the mountains in his hands. Can you tell what they're doing right there? What is that they're holding? It looks like a fishing pole. Have you ever been fishing? He's got the oceans and the seas in his hands. They are swimming in the ocean. Look at that. There's a sailboat way out in the water. Have you ever gone swimming in the ocean? He's got you and he's got me in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Look at that. Does that look like a little boy and his daddy? It looks like maybe they did a puzzle. Have you ever done a puzzle, especially recently? I think a lot of people are doing puzzles these days. 
he's got everybody here in his hands. Can you see that? That looks like a park. There's a bunch of people playing in the park. He's got everybody there in his hands. Look at that. Can you, can you see the whole map of the world? So he's got everybody in this whole map in his hands. Oops. He's got everybody everywhere in his hands. That is a lot of people. You see all those houses? All of those people are in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's a picture of the whole world. And you can see the moon. That is just really cool. And that is the end of our book. Do you know who it's talking about when it says he's got the whole world in his hands. It's talking about God. God has the whole world in his hands. And that means we don't need to worry or be scared or afraid because God is holding us in his hands. Hi guys, it's Mr. Duff. And I am excited to get to sing with you guys again. A little bit we're doing it kind of differently obviously but I'm excited to get to do this so um, I was asked to do a specific song and I don't know if you know it so we're gonna do a couple verses of it and as we do it hopefully you can catch it and sing along with us okay it is called he's got the whole world in his hands you ready he's got the whole world in his hands 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 now he has the itty bitty baby he's got the itty bitty baby in his hands he's got the itty bitty baby in his hands he's got the itty bitty baby in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. I always like singing with you guys, even if it's from far away. I hope you were singing along too. And I look forward to the time that we can all be together in the same room at the same time. You guys be good. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Mwah. Hi kids. It's good to see you again. I know it's been a long time since we've seen each other at church. Today, I wanted to tell you another story this one is called Daniel in the Lion's Den. And guess what? I have a boy at my house named Daniel. But it's not this Daniel, it's a different Daniel. So are you ready to hear this story? Okay. Long ago, a man named Daniel, an exile from Judah, was praying to his God. God had given Daniel a special gift. He could understand visions and dreams. 
Soon, Daniel decided it was time to return home to the city of Babylon. Here, King Darius ruled his kingdom with the help of 120 governors. These governors reported to three presidents. Daniel was one of the presidents, and he worked very hard. The king found Daniel so trustworthy that he wanted to put Daniel in charge of the whole kingdom. The other governors were not happy when they heard this and started plotting against Daniel. They wanted to get him in trouble. But they could not find any fault in Daniel, for he was a good man. We shall not find anything against Daniel. He is too loyal to King Darius, said one of the governors. He is also loyal to his God, said another. The only way we can find complaint against Daniel is in his worship to his God, decided these men. The governors encouraged the king to agree to a new law that no one should worship any other god for 30 days, and anyone who does will be thrown into the lion's den. King Darius signed that document, and the law was made. But Daniel loved God and continued to pray three times a day, just as he did before, ignoring the new law. The governors saw him and went to the king, and they told the king, Daniel has broken the new law. He must be thrown to the lions. King Darius was upset and tried to save Daniel, but he could do nothing. At sundown, Daniel was thrown to the lions. I hope your God will save you and deliver you, said Darius. That evening, no musical instruments were brought to the king, and he could not sleep at all because he was so worried about Daniel. He woke up very early the next morning and hurried straight to the lion's den. Daniel, has your God delivered you and saved you? Darius cried anxiously. O king, live forever. He has found me blameless, called Daniel joyously. My God sent his angels to shut the mouths of the lions because I am innocent before him and before you. Daniel was so happy and ordered that those or excuse me, Darius was glad and ordered that those who had falsely accused Daniel be thrown in with the lions. Then the king decreed that Daniel's God was the only God. Hi, this is my friend the lion. I don't think I would be too worried if I was thrown in a lion's den with this lion. But if I was like Daniel and I was thrown into a lion's den with real lions, I think I would be super worried. Would you be worried if you were thrown into a lion's den with real lions? I don't blame you. I would be worried too. But Daniel didn't have to worry because God was taking care of him, even in the lion's den. And if God takes care of Daniel in a lion's den with real lions, then he will take care of you too. So we don't need to worry because God is taking care of us. to be making some egg carton animals. So there's going to be two different options. You can either make a caterpillar or a bird. The first one we're going to work on is the caterpillar and Brody over here, my assistant, has already started painting his caterpillar. Um, Basically what we did was we cut an egg carton right down the center. So he's using a paper egg carton, which is easier to paint, but if you don't have a paper one, if you have like a styrofoam 
egg carton like this one, you could still use it, you just wouldn't really be able to paint it very easily. But we just cut it right down the middle. This one, this egg carton has eggs in it, but I just wanted to show you. We cut right down the center so that we could make two caterpillars. So I already started my caterpillar and I made mine rainbow. And then I think it would be cute. I probably won't do it right now, but it, I think it might be cute to add some little feet at the corners here. I thought that would be kind of a cute idea. But right now I'm just gonna add the antenna and then I'm also going to add some eyes on the front of my caterpillar. So I've decided that the red is going to be his face. So this is why we need the pipe cleaners. I'm just cutting this pipe cleaner into two small pieces like that, kind of like you did for your butterflies. And then I'm gonna curl those up a little bit so he's got curly antenna. And then I'm going to use a pin to just poke holes in my caterpillar's head here. And then I'm gonna stick the antenna through the little holes there on both sides and then turn it over and then underneath I'm going to bend them over a little bit so they don't come out of place. And then later on I can go back and glue, put a little dab of glue underneath to hold them better. See? Not too bad. And then, so this is why we also need our little googly eyes. So if you don't have googly eyes, you can draw your eyes for your caterpillar or you could use buttons like I said before. And then I'm going to pick two small googly eyes. And then I'm going to use the tacky glue for this. How's it going Brody? Good. <laughs> Looks like Brody's making his caterpillar green like Hermie from last time. And what's kind of fun about the, the caterpillar, if you decide to make a caterpillar, is that you can use your caterpillar and your butterfly from last week, and you can pretend that your, butterf your caterpillar's turning into a beautiful butterfly. They kind of go together. And you can paint your caterpillar however you want to, decorate it with crayons or markers. There's my little caterpillar's eyes. So, there's my little eyes there. Okay, so that's my caterpillar. While Brody's working on his caterpillar, I was going to show you how to start your bird, if you want to make a bird. And the first thing you need is your egg carton. This one is the one I've already cut out of. But as you can see, on my egg carton, it looks like, almost like a bird beak sticking out here. So when I look at this egg carton, I kind of see two eyes and then a bird beak. Do you see that? So I thought it would be fun to make these into birds. And what I did was I kind of cut along the side here on both sides. And then I wanted to make sure I got the whole bird beak here. So I kind of cut at an angle. So I cut at an angle there so that I got the whole bird beak. And I can set this one aside and I can cut out another bird out of this piece later. But this just kind of shows you basically what your face of your bird will look like. So it's got two eyes and then his bird beak. And then if you want to see these corners here, you can kind of round those off if you want just to make his 
base a little more rounded. So that's basically how you start. And let me show you what the bird looks like, just so you know what I'm talking about. Here's one of the finished, almost finished birds. So this is a little red bird that I made. And you can see that his, this is the piece that I just cut out. And then I painted his beak orange. And then I made a little red around his face and then I decided to paint the inside of his eyes white. And then I glued the googly eyes inside there. But I'll show you a little more in detail how I did this. Okay, for our bird's body, I used the top of the egg carton and I just cut it out so that I could use this piece of cardboard. And then I got a red piece of cardstock, which I found a heart-shaped bowl that we have. And I just traced, traced the bowl so that I could have a nice little fat red bird. And I'm gonna glue the red bird's body onto the back of the egg carton, but first, I'm going to cut off this excess part and I'll probably use this piece for the other bird. But this is the top of the egg carton, so I had this little piece that also, you know, was the side of the egg carton that I left on there so that when I glue the bird's head on there, it'll kind of support the head a little better. You don't have to have that, you could just glue the back onto the cardboard, but I just thought that would give it a little extra support. So then I'm going to measure to see exactly where that's going to go, and I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to glue this on there. Put some glue here. So I'm going to stick that right there for our bird's body. And then I'm gonna add some more glue up here at the top so that I can glue the head on there. And you will probably need a heavier glue for this. I'm not sure that a glue stick would work for something quite as heavy as this egg carton cardboard. So then I'm gonna stick this right there. And then it kind of overlaps on the top there. And then I can go back and I can paint this part red so it blends in. And then I'm gonna add, once that's all dry, I'm gonna wait till that dries. I'll just set it, set it there so it can dry for a little while. So this is my red bird. And for the red bird, I need to add some sort of stick at the bottom like I talked about so that it could be kind of like a little puppet. And I just happen to have these wooden sticks here. So I'm gonna tape it to the back so I could use them like a little puppet. This bird I'm working on is still a little wet, so I don't know, hopefully he won't fall apart. But some of these egg cartons don't have the long piece, like this one, like the bird beak piece. Some of them don't have that. So if you don't have that type of egg carton, you can always add your own bird beak, which is what I did for this one. And I just glued it in there. So he actually kind of has an open mouth. You can see his mouth is open. And then also, since I this this one, the egg carton is turned instead of this way, it's turned this way. So that's why his eyes are kind of bulging out. So it's just another option. Like I said before, he doesn't have wings yet, so I need to cut out some wings. So I'll show you how I cut out wings. This is just a scrap piece of paper that I have that I folded over so that I can make both wings look similar. So for the wings, I just basically cut out almost like a crescent shape, like a moon shape. I kind of like him sticking out like that so it looks like he's flying. 
his little feather on top there. So Brody is going to glue those on for me with the tacky glue. And while he's doing that, I've got to add the eyebrows to my pink bird. So these are all diff just different options of what you can do to your bird. So you don't have to do all these different things. You can just kind of pick what you like the best. And I just thought it would be funny for this bird to have eyebrows. So I found this feather, which was already kind of bent in this, this shape. So I thought that would be perfect. And then I'm just gonna glue it right there. And there is my angry bird. <laughs> it looks like an angry bird at least. He's got really fuzzy eyebrows, basically a unibrow. So that's that. They kind of remind us of the verse in the Bible that tells us not to worry because God takes care of the birds and if he takes care of birds he takes care of us so that doesn't that means that we don't need to worry right so these little birds are a cute reminder of that how'd it go Brody okay, Brody's got the wings glued on here so there's that little guy so we just need to add the stick but we can do we'll do that later but I hope you have fun with your projects and I would love to see what you come up with. See you next time. Hey Arabado kids, thanks for letting me join you for this edition of Bible Blast. We got a couple of questions that I'm going to try to answer in just a moment, but first I wanted to share something with you. This is a little uh, picture frame that I have in my apartment and I put different things that are special to me on it. Sometimes I put pictures of people and other times quotes, but today I've got two drawings that were made for me. One was by Luke and Zoe Schlifka, and the other one was by Thea Mott. And they are so nice, and they're so talented in making these pictures, and I just wanted to say thank you for sending those to me. It was a great surprise and a lot of encouragement. So the two questions today, one question comes from Margaret, and her question is, did Noah really put unicorns on his ark? Well, there are some things I know and some things I don't know in trying to answer this question. One thing I know based on what the Bible tells us is that all the different types of animals that existed at that time, Noah put those on the ark. What I don't know is if unicorns existed at that time. I've seen pictures of unicorns, pictures that have been drawn or painted, and I've seen stuffed animals that look like unicorns, but I've never really seen a real unicorn. So I don't know if a unicorn was on the ark or not. The other question comes from Eddie. And Eddie's question is, does Jesus really live in my heart? That's a great question, Eddie. Here's what I know. I know that Jesus is always with us, Eddie. And then the second thing I know that scripture tells me is that when we make the decision to be a follower of Jesus, we're baptized, that's the moment that Jesus, in the form of the Holy Spirit, comes to live in our heart. Thanks again for sharing your questions with me. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Hey kids, thanks for joining us for Bible Blast. Hope you had a blast.